Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our video log series on the mesmerizing Pandora's cluster installation. Today, I have the honor of speaking with Dr. Roger Molina, a renowned figure from the University of Texas at Dallas, who's been an integral part of this groundbreaking project. So let's let's just dive right in. Roger, it's incredible to have you here. And I know that you and I have known each other for nearly 10 years now, but this is our first chance to work together on a project. Could you please share your thoughts on the collaboration between Sired Exchange and the University of Texas at Dallas and the excitement surrounding the project? Very motivated to work with you on this project. Um, uh, as the listeners can find out by Googling is I have a hybrid career um, that began in astrophysics, uh, in artistic publishing, and now I run an art science lab. And, you know, this is all wonderful stuff, but this is one of the first projects where we're really applying theory to practice. And so my dream is that we make a scientific discovery that would never have been made without artists and scientists collaborating. That is a wonderful goal and aspiration. And I hope that our journey takes us exactly there. So when we met long ago, what you and I both share is this interest and what drew us together on this project is the power of what happens when we remove the silos between science and the arts. And as we know, this installation bridges the gap between art and science. And you are one of the leaders in the field of the benefits of multidisciplinary work in education. So could you expand a little bit on how the fusion of the disciplines in a general way influences both realms? I know you've got a lot of different things that you have done in this area. It so turns out the disciplines were only invented recently. Um, if you go back a thousand years, we wouldn't have been talking about it. Uh, and then, um, especially in Europe, this metaphor of the tree of knowledge developed, but they didn't know anything about ecology or ec uh, plants. The, the branches of a tree never talk to each other, but the roots do. So my analogy is it's time to cut down the tree of knowledge and grow the rhizome of knowledge. And the roots of a tree, if a tree dies, the roots just keep going. <laughs> so, you know, in, in ecology, uh, this idea of the rhizome, uh, you know, a lot of humanists have written about rhizomic structures and so on. And so bridging the gap already, I think, falls into the trap of a false metaphor. I totally agree. Some of my favorite historical um, people, such as Leonardo da Vinci, did not have these silos in their lives. They were he didn't go to university. No, but let, let me just build on that. Um, yeah. I, I've been doing uh, teaching and research in Colombia, South America. Um, and one of the things that uh, shocked me is I was working with a, a Colombian student from an ind indigenous uh, group in Colombia, and he was going to do a podcast like this one about bridging the arts and sciences or whatever. And he came back and he said, nobody was willing to talk to me about because in my culture, we don't divide knowledge into art, science, medicine, law. We divide it into other categories like local knowledge, distant knowledge, recent knowledge, old knowledge. There are all these other ways of dividing up knowledge. We can't talk about uh, reuniting the arts and sciences. You mentioned that you were really hoping that, that by uh, working rhizomically and, and not, not having any artificial boundaries that we would actually end up with a scientific discovery. Do you want to talk a little bit about how that might work? Okay, I, you know, I can't, you know, um, okay, so I, you know, I fell into my own trap. Um, so um, we're working with a, a young PhD student, um, Antarip Golgoy. He's just in the middle of his PhD 
and he just finds us weird. But it's, it, he's, you know, he's now making a, a shear map, which is a scientific term, um, and he's having thoughts he would never have had of trying to do it in a way that we can use it in this installation. And so, you know, maybe, um, you know, then you get into, you know, all the study of creativity and innovation. And, you know, so, some people invented something, you know, they went on vacation, they were going to do something else. So they stepped out of the trolley bus and they had the, well, what's the famous uh, uh, thing that I'm thinking of? where he was stepping off the, the bus and had a brilliant idea that then he checked out and it worked. So maybe uh, Anthony will stumble on something and then when he publishes the paper, uh, uh, Brian will be a co-author. So I think that's really, really awesome. And, and one of the joys for me has been watching how our scientists, because we, we've, got, we've got you all there at the University of Texas at Dallas, but in our past vlog, we also introduced Carol Christian from the Space Telescope Science Institute, and uh, and then uh, all all everyone's been talking with and engaging with our creative director Ben Heim, who everyone will meet in a future video session, and it's just so interesting to watch the back and forth, the creative process, and and the excitement that builds from this multidisciplinary team. So okay, but, okay, so let me just uh, puncture my own metaphor. So maybe we'll make a scientific discovery of note, but maybe we'll stumble on to a form of musical expression that goes viral. And you know, there I'm just gonna refer, I was once on a <clears throat> trip in Northern Italy in the town of Pisa, where I think someone threw something over the leaning tower. And there's now a gravitational wave observatory there where they're trying to detect the oscillations in the structure of the universe. And I was in the control room and they sonify the data. So you can, as the data is streaming in, you can listen to it. And I've never heard sounds like that before. You know, maybe the music industry could adopt making music out of scientific data, not all of it, some of it is boring, uh, both sonically and scientifically. Um, but so, you know, I think part of the rhizome thing is how we mix things together. And then maybe the soup is really good, but you don't want to know what's in it. So that's, that's beautiful, because what you're really getting at is, is, is the reciprocity is, you know, how all of this mixed together will work to create something that, that, you know, something amazing and beautiful together. And, you know, I know that we struggled actually naming the nonprofit SciArt Exchange. I don't know if I ever told you this story. Everybody wanted to call it SciArt Integration, but all I could ever envision was there still being barriers between the sciences and the art, and somehow they were just intercalating. What I wanted to picture was something so intimate and close that it was not separable. So um, I really, I, I, I really appreciate the perspectives that you're bringing to this, and I'm very, very excited that that our teams are working together as one and and talking about the impact of 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 bridging communities that shouldn't be in isolated communities and didn't always exist as isolated communities and um, and the magic that hopefully is gonna happen. But, okay, I'll just finish. So part of my narrative about the physics of loneliness is sometimes talking aloud to other people is the best medicine. And that's what we've just done for 20 minutes. Um, you know, we could have said these things to ourselves, but by sharing them aloud, not by ourselves, but there are three of us here, um, we, we, something may click. And uh, so part of the physics of loneliness is thinking aloud in podcasts. Understood. Well, thank you. And to our audience, please stay tuned as we continue to explore the wonders of this incredible project and this amazing group of people that have come together to create it. 
So thank you. Thank you.